What is up restaurant friends? Do you wanna get started making reels and TikToks for your restaurant, but you're nervous about showing your face or you don't exactly know what to show? You're in the right place because today I'm gonna to show you how to create restaurant reels that actually get butts in seats without having to show your face at all. And I'm gonna break down and show you exactly how to do it. Now we first need to look back at how the viewing pattern and how our video pattern has changed over the last 20, 30 years. When I was growing up, this is what our Friday nights would look like. It would be the family sitting around on the couch, one person has the remote control, watching Full House. And how did restaurants leverage that? Well, McDonald's would go to ABC and say, hey, you've got a ton of people watching Fri uh, uh, Friday night on Full House. Would you, could we pay you to get in front of them and maybe be on commercial breaks? ABC says, yeah, that's great, Full House, it's super expensive to be on here. If you wanna be on, it's $5 million. McDonald's says, great, we will get the ROI and they will pay for that, all right? And so what they would do is they would run commercials and get all these eyeballs. And as you probably heard, the, the 18 to 49 demographic is what they wanna look at. That's the most expensive audience if you're watching Full House. But most restaurants can't afford that or they couldn't afford that back then. They were relegated to late like late night TV and things because there's two major barriers to entry. Number one is the cost to produce a commercial like that back in the 90s, 2000s. It was expensive. You had to bring in a film crew um, script and you had to do editing and all kinds of stuff. It was expensive. It probably cost several thousand dollars. McDonald's probably spent millions of dollars on it. And then one day a guy came along named Steve Jobs who invented this device. And this device changed everything because it is a total content creation machine that you can put in your pocket. Think about it. What all does this do? It can take pictures, videos. You can send out, um, you can post things anywhere in the world. You can go live anywhere in the world. It does everything. It, if you've seen this meme, everything in this picture, you can now fit in your pocket. It's true. We have all of this stuff in this tiny little device. If you had told yourself 20 years ago that you could do all of these things in your uh, device, you'd go, you'd think I was insane, but you were walking around in your restaurant with a content creation device that you can use to take pictures, to take videos, at any time in your restaurant. You don't need to bring in a crew. So think about the power of that. But then another problem is, who owned the towers? Who owned the airwaves? Well, it was the big networks. And they were the ones who set the prices. If you wanted to be your your wanted to be on Saturday morning cartoons, you had to go there and say, hey, I want to show my Captain Crunch, and they would show it. Local restaurants could not do that. It was very expensive to run ads. Many people ran ads in newspapers, but same thing, you're, it, it costs money to put that in there. Then a guy named Mark Zuckerberg came along and what did he do? He gave everybody a way that they have their own channel. They can distribute their content that they create on this device, they can now distribute it to anyone, anywhere in the world. So there's no more TV stations, um, antennas that are needed. You've got it in your pocket and you could go live right now and anybody anywhere in the world could be watching you. How insane is that? And restaurants have a big opportunity to do that because now you can have your own TV station. Think about it. You can broadcast at any time, anywhere and not have to rely on fancy production equipment or paying someone to be on their network. You have your own TV studio right here in your pocket. And that gives you a lot of great opportunities. So I'm gonna show you today how to make videos that actually get butts in seats and you don't have to show your face at all. If you don't know me, my name's Court from the Restaurant Marketing University. We help restaurants and local, local restaurants get butts in seats with digital marketing strategies. Now, you're gonna hear me talk about the hook story offer model. We're gonna go over and over again, but basically any content you create, whether it is a video or a post or an email, whatever should follow this model. Hook, story, offer. First, we gotta hook them. We gotta get them interested. So just like a fish, when you cast out that hook, you gotta put some bait on it and hope that the fish bites. Same thing we're doing, except we're doing it with customers. 
Then you gotta tell them a story. Storytelling's the oldest technique ever. We all know stories, but you gotta be able to tell a really good, compelling story, and I'm gonna teach you how to do that today. And then an offer. What do you want them to do? What is the thing at the end of the video they should do? A lot of times we call that a call to action. What's the thing they should do at the end of the video? I'm gonna break down and show you exactly what to do. So let's first talk about the hook. How do we grab people's attention? Now, this is not how we we can consume content anymore. It's not everybody watching the same screen with one remote control. This is how we do it. How many of you in your living room look around? This is what it is. Everybody is on their own different device and in their own different world. And these are all remote controls. And this, think about your viewing habits. You're on your phone. Swipe, 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 swipe. That's how we consume content. And Everybody is in different worlds. Not everybody is watching Full House. Mom's looking at fashion stuff in Instagram. Uh, son is looking at Minecraft videos over on YouTube Shorts. Everybody's in a different world looking at different things. But what's one common denominator that everybody likes to watch? Food. Everybody likes to watch food. And so you as a restaurant have a big opportunity to get in front of these people and get these eyeballs. Now these are lots of different platforms and you, you might be asking which one should I be on? I would say for most restaurants, Instagram is the first place you should start. But then I see lots of opportunities on TikTok. So if you're thinking about TikTok, I think that could be some really good opportunities for you. We're gonna talk more about that. And so the problem is, again, they've all got their own remote controls in their hand. You have less than a second to grab their attention. It's called pattern interrupt because people are on their phones going swipe, 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 swipe. If you can get them to stop for one second, swipe, 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 interesting. Eh, swipe, 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 oh. And you get them to stop on your video, then you win. But otherwise, if they're just swiping by, um, you're, they're not going to see your content. All right. So that's the goal. The goal is to get people to stop on your video. So right now let's go into the computer and I'm going to show you some proven, uh, viral hooks that you can steal and copy for your restaurant. Now here's an example of a fabulous hook. This is Corey from eat good local. He's in the restaurant marketing university. Look at this hook. Look at this is the first two seconds of his video. Watch this. This, this giant, this pulling this cheese, look at his face. This grabs your attention right away. And you don't have to show your face. You can be obnoxious with food. Look at this. This video is four seconds long and it starts with just drizzling this obnoxious amount of cheese on there. Does that grab your attention right away? That is a pattern interrupt. And in four seconds, they hooked your attention. Here's another example. You could um, have questions. Questions are great hooks. So, you know, you could say, did you know that we serve brunch seven days a week? Or you could do uh, a did you know about the food? And that question is the hook and to get people to stop. You could do listicles. So listicles are like top five things. That is another hook. So people are like, oh, I've got to watch to learn the top five things that I should do at restaurants across the city. And you see how these are just really fast paced cuts. You, they don't linger on everything. Every shot is like one second. And but it has a really good hook that draws you in. So do obnoxious things. Get people to stop the scroll. Here's a great example. Steal this and just look at other examples of what people are doing with reels. All right. So now that we've got them hooked, they've stopped. They're watching our video. Now we've got to tell them a story. Storytelling's the oldest technique in the world. It's very simple. Stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Star Wars, Luke dreams of a be better future. He vis what's out there in the galaxy? He goes out and he trains. He learns the force. He meets Obi-Wan. He's the teacher. And then at the end, Luke does it, uses all of his training and blows up the Death Star. He's, he, it's got a beginning, middle, and end. It's the hero's journey. And you can use that same storytelling technique over and over again. Here's an example where you go in and you walk into the restaurant. All right, what does it look like walking into the restaurant? That's the beginning of the journey. 
then sit down and you show the food. This is what the food looks like. So we walk in, see the food, and now we eat it. Now you might be saying, Court, I don't wanna show my face. I don't wanna be on camera. That's fine. I'm willing to put myself out there, but you don't have to at all. You don't have to put, show your face at all. In fact, here are some examples that you can steal for your restaurant social media. So here's a great example of telling a story and you don't have to show your face. So let's look at it. It's seven seconds long. We're looking at uh, this being made and I mean, it's a beginning, middle and end. What do we do? We start with it like this. We put on the butter, we put on some Parmesan cheese, we're getting it ready. And then at the end, we close the box. It has a beginning, middle and end. This was the masters put this out. Look at this walking tour. So imagine you're doing a tour where you're you're going into the rest, uh, restaurant. What's it like? What's the experience like going through? I love how they stop at these different places. Again, you're not showing your face. You're showing your hand just walking along. This is a great example of a video that you could steal, not even have to show your face at all. I love this one and it does have faces, but look at what it is. It's all your people. It's not necessarily your face, but they use product. They show the product, but they also show the people. These are the people behind the scenes at the restaurant. And so you could do another thing like that, not even video, um, but um, you're just showing the people behind the scenes. You could also do like uh, like a process. Here's another one of like putting these little uh, pizzas or whatever these are together. We're seeing the, the food being put on. It's being dropped on there. I mean, look how easy that is. Um, you could also have your people do videos. So this is one that we do where we have the bartender explaining how they make their jar of the month. They have these fancy jars and we just have her create these jars. We show like what the ingredients are. It is super easy. So all you're doing is telling a story, not showing your face at all. Here's another example where you're, it's the, that tour thing where you're going in through a tour. Again, no faces at all needed. Now you're probably wondering what editing app should I use? How should I edit these? There are two that I love. One is called InShot, one is called CapCut. They are both fabulous. They have free versions. Uh, each of them have paid versions and uh, features that you might want at some point, but you can start off just simple. You don't have to pay for them and they work on uh, all devices. I use mine on my iPad. It makes it really easy. Now, I wanna share with you a secret tip. This is an editing trick that not a lot of people know about, but it ha will dramatically increase how long people watch your story, how to create stories that use a different technique. Now, instead of starting at the beginning of a story, you start at the end. Think about the very first episode of Breaking Bad. Think about that pilot episode. How did it start? There is a guy in his underwear next to an old RV holding a gun and there are cops coming down the road at him and he is ready to shoot. Holy cow, how did this happen? I am hooked. I am in. I want to know. And what happens? The very next scene, we go back several weeks. He's a teacher in a classroom. And it's like, how did that teacher get to this point? Well, they used a different storytelling strategy where they started at the end and then they went back in time. So what you can do, I call it the infinite loop strategy. What you do is you start with the beginning, or I'm sorry, you start at the end then you go back in time, you show yourself walking in, you show the food, how good it looks, and then you start at the end, or you end there, which loops back to the beginning, and people don't even realize they're watching it over and over again. Check it out, here's how it looks. So here's the infinite loop strategy. What you're doing is you're starting here at the beginning. So I start at the beginning with me taking like an obnoxious bite. And so I then I go back in time, I tell the story of like going in, I show the menu item, then this is what I ordered. I drop it in there. I just kind of do a shot over it just so you can see the food. I then have myself grabbing up a piece like this and look at how this ends with me taking a bite. So what I did was I just cut this clip and I put the second half of the clip here at the beginning. So here's this example where I start with me taking a big bite here at the beginning. Then we go on a tour inside of the restaurant and we're telling the story. Here's the beginning where this is what it looks like. You know, here's the menu. This is what I'm going to order right here. 
then, um, oh my gosh, the food is so great. You show off the, the product and then you see me grab it and then I take a bite. There's the infinite loop. Now, let me show you this one. This is a great example as well, but I want you to look at how they could have fixed this. Introducing our drunken chicken, chicken cutlet. And so this is how they start. And then they go back in time and they show how it's made, how the sauce is put on, what they do with the cheese and the bread and the chicken. I mean, look at it. It's a story beginning, middle and end, but they started by showing it. Now, look at what they did with the, this is how they could have done one easy little thing. You see how it says swing by to see why it's one of our most popular subs. If they had made the text here the same as what it is here and they would have applied that infinite loop strategy, it would when the when the video comes back around and it starts to replay, people will notice that these words changed in this version, but if they're the same people won't even notice that they're watching it again. So they'll just loop it through. So that would be an easy fix. Don't do something at the end of the video that's going to take people out of the experience and want to swipe. Do it so it loops back around and so people are just watching over and over and over again. So we've got them hooked, we've told them a story, and we've captured their attention. Now we've got to give them an offer. We have to give them something to do. What can they go do after it? Just like the Godfather said, I'm going to make them an offer he can't refuse. You want to do that too for your restaurant social media. So what you can do is you can ask for likes, comments, shares. You can ask that at the end of the video. Hey, if you like this comment, hit like. It really helps the channel out. Another thing you can do is send people to your online ordering menu and you can say, hey, go check out order online and see our menu. This is great, you're driving people there, but the problem is not everybody is always in a buying decision when they see your stuff. Maybe it's 11 o'clock at night when they're in bed and they're just scrolling. They see your post that sends to their online ordering. That's great, but they're not ready to order right now. And so you're, you kind of have a missed opportunity there because you're always just renting. What you're doing is you are telling Instagram, hey, I want to rent your audience just like ABC did. I want to get in front of your people. Now you can run ads or just creating content, but as we all know, um, Instagram doesn't show it to everybody. So not all of your posts are gonna be seen to the world. So this really became a problem when the world shut down a few years ago. And I had several restaurants reaching out to me and they were like, Court, we've got no butts in seats. There is nobody coming in. We're having like $50 days if we're lucky. What do we do? And I said, well, do you have a way that you can get people off of social media and into an email database? Because once you have them in an email database, now you can send emails and text messages and get in people's phones at any time because they're gonna get a notification from you on their phone of an email. Maybe it's a new special, maybe it's your Black Friday special happening, maybe it's your Mother's Day special that you're letting people know about, maybe a new menu item. Whatever it is, you're not relying on A, the person being on Instagram, B, them seeing it, uh, see them stopping on your thing and taking action. You can get into their phones. And so it's a much better way. And one of the most uh, uh, famous examples you probably know is the My Panera card. So I probably got this 20 years ago. You signed up, you had to give them your email address. I think probably your phone number at the time. And you would go in and you would scan it and just seem kind of random. Every once in a while, they would give you a free cookie just for being a member. I never really got anything more than a free cookie. That was kind of it. And then a few years ago, they just took it online. So this still works, but they have a an app version of it. But really, they just kind of gave away free cookies. But at least they were building a database. At least when the world shut down, they had a way to talk to people because they had done this thing where they were hooking people with a free cookie, right? That's a hook offer. And then they were making an offer for people to join their membership. But it's this old school loyalty program, all right, where there's generic offers for everybody, like the free cookie. And it's really just becomes a diluted value. What is this worth? Especially if you can't get butts in seats, you know, especially if the restaurant's not open and it's limited revenue opportunities. There's not a lot of ways that you can make uh, money with like old school loyalty programs, right? And what we often heard, what I often heard from restaurant owners, because this is what we did. It brings in freebie and coupon seekers. So we would run videos that at the end, the call to action was join, join the loyalty club. But owners were like, we don't like the people coming in here because they're just like freebie seekers. 
totally get it. I totally get it. You don't want those people. I heard a lot, well, we don't like to give away free food. I get it. I understand your product and your food is valuable and you don't want to dilute that by just giving it away for free. Totally get it. And we also got asked, how do we know we're actually getting an ROI on this? Panera kind of flipped the script. What did they do? If you've seen it, about a year ago, they came out with their, uh, it was a coffee club and now it's a sip club. For $11 a month, you get unlimited coffee, soda, everything. They are giving away coffee, which costs them nothing, basically. And uh, you know people aren't just coming and just getting the coffee and leaving. In fact, they reported, this was over a year ago, um, 750,000 people paying $9 a month. That number has gone up from now, uh, since then. But here's the kicker. They uh, report increased guest frequency and ticket size. $6.7 million of money coming in the bank just for getting a coffee. So we saw this and we were like, how could we help restaurants drive a profit stream like that where they could hire and retain rock star employees, where they could offset rising costs so that your call to action could be to join your membership. And so Go Explore Local is our way to build a, a membership, a community where you can use your reels, you can use your content that you're doing to build a community and give people exclusive experiences at your local restaurant. It's perfect for board game cafes, coffee shops, uh, pizza shops, burger places. You could do cooking classes. You could do wineries or breweries. The possibilities are endless. We want to help people discover other local restaurants. So instead of that old school loyalty program or old school punch cards, it's a digital punch card where people can come in and they punch and get their offers on their phone. And the first thing is to, to get them into a free club. And so we have a free membership. And what do we do? We offer a hook. And so you put on your videos, on your vertical videos, hey, join our membership and join our free club and get a buy one burger just for joining. And everybody to get into this private club of yours has to give their email address and their phone number. And so uh, this might be an example of a membership that you put together that you are promoting through your reels. You could say, hey, for one time only as a hook to get people in the door, we're gonna give you a buy one, get one burger punch. And every month, just for being like a good fan, you'll get a free appetizer. Every month, just for that, maybe with a purchase. And when your birthday month comes around, you'll get a free cheesecake. The cost is zero dollars. Really, the cost is their email and their phone number. That's what they're giving to get into the free club. And you will get a link that you can, again, use in your videos as your call to action, as your offer. You could put in videos. You could send out in emails. You could put on table tents. Uh, you could put on your Google My Business page. You could do lots of different things with that link. And it's your offer, and you're driving people to go join and sign up. And this is what the, the sign-up page would look like with your logo, your information, your everything, where they would first sign up for that free club, okay? They would come here and they would put in their name, email address, phone number, because now you are building a database. You are building a, um, a, an audience that you own. Again, you're getting people off of their devices into your database, so now you can contact them over and over again. So you'll have this as a CSV. You can do whatever you want with all of those emails. They are yours. So a customer comes in and wants to redeem. They come in, they sit down, they say, hey, I'm in the club, I've got this buy one, uh, get one burger offer. And it looks just like this, it's a digital punch card. Staff says, okay, great, let's punch it for you, just like a punch card. They click this, there's a quick redeem process, it takes five seconds, and then you can notice it goes away. And it goes away and offers can be reset one time only, so it can be used once, monthly, weekly, daily, or birthday month. So the offers can reset however you want. So instead of a physical punch card that you're having to constantly punch and give them new things, it's on their phone and they reset and they pay monthly to get access to that card. Every single month they are paying to be able to use that card because the next step is to get people to upgrade to your exclusive membership now. So that's what separates this from old school VIP clubs where everybody gets to be a member. This is a paid experience. So you start with the free one, but then you have the brew club and maybe for $19 a month, you could once a month get a free burger. You could also maybe have three punches for a dollar pint, let's say. So every month they would have these four punches. 
They could have a free burger and three pints. You could put things on there and say one per visit if you want, terms and conditions, that's fine. Once a week, maybe you have a great appetizer and you could say, hey, members get a free appetizer every week. Maybe you have some awesome signature fries and every day you're willing to give them free signature fries with a purchase. But look at this. You know people aren't just going to come in and get the one free burger and leave, especially your people paying $19 a month. This is going to get you money coming in every single month. Plus, look at how many times you can drive people in. Whether they come in zero times or they come in and use all of these punches. All right, you're gonna get increased uh, guest frequency and check size on this. So what you do is you say, hey, you've got all these other things that you can sign up for and upgrade. So you might be saying, this is interesting. How much does it cost? For merchants, it's a one-time 197 setup fee. We will do all the muckety muck to get set up. One-time 197, then it is $0 a month. Costs you nothing. We will pay you out through ACH every 30 days, costs you nothing at all. So the merchant earns 75% of all su subscription sales. So you just get money coming into the bank every single month. 75% of everything that comes in. Development and operations, we don't charge anything. We're improving and getting this better, 15%. And then we have a friends and foodies program. And I don't have time to go into it today, but in our friends and foodies program, uh, get people get links for, and they get 10% recurring for every membership that they sell. So if you have a TikTok or you have an Instagram on your videos as your call to action, you could say, hey, join Quartz Cafe and get a buy one, get one burger and you would earn 10% of every single month of every single one that you sold. And so you could do the math of what that looks like and you could use these links on all kinds of different platforms. It's just a link that would go to this uh, page. And so here's just a quick breakdown. If it was a $19 a month membership, the restaurant would earn $14.25. The um, development and operations and then our friends and foodies 10%, so about a for $1.90 every single month, recurring coming into your bank account. So imagine this as an offer. Imagine this as an offer in your videos at the end where it's, hey, join our club, join our membership and get a buy one, get one burger. You can do the math. If you have how many people paying you $19 a month, it could be $99 a month. It could be whatever. The price does not matter. Um, and you can do the math on what that might look like. So if you want to try it out, you can scan this right here and test it out and see what the experience is like. So over and over again, use this strategy, hook story offer in your videos, hook them. The very first second has got to grab their attention. You got to get them watching, then tell them a story, make them want to keep watching. If they don't want to keep watching, they're not going to get to your offer, which your offer is the most important thing. You want to either ask them to like, comment, share, go to your website, or maybe get them off of the platform and into your own database. And if you even want to level it up one more time, you could get them into a membership program. So there's lots of ways you can do it. If you have any questions, send me an email here. I am here to help. Again, my name's Court from the Restaurant Marketing University and Go Explore Local. I'll talk to you soon.